Greetings. Hello and welcome to Raven's Arcana. I am Raven. We're going to be talking a little bit about the power of language. So language, as you know, is the way we communicate with each other, whether it be body language, written word, spoken word, symbols. There's the language of music, art, a lot of other things are involved. But we're going to drill this down to spoken word, written word, and symbols or symbolism. Right, so we all know that we, we take sounds, we put them together to make a word. We construct phrases and sentences with those words, and we have understanding and meaning and ways we communicate with each other. You know, in the written language, we're going to use punctuation to accentuate, to emphasize what we want to get across. Right, so if we're giving a command or a statement, we're going to have a period. If we want to put some more emphasis on that, we're going to put an exclamation mark. Take out the trash, right? We're going to have a question. How was your weekend? Put that question mark on there. So that's going to replace tone, emphasis, you know, with a rhythm and cadence of spoken language. Punctuation is going to replace that, right? And then we have symbols, and symbols hold so much energy and so many other things. And this is kind of where I'm going and how symbols will relate to all language, symbolism, meaning. And uh, we'll start with this statement that I really love. A picture is worth a thousand words. A symbol is worth a thousand pictures, which blows my mind if I sit there and philosophize about that. What does that mean? Well, how do you make a word? You spell it. What does that mean? That mean you're casting a spell on symbols as you're arranging them. And that spell has an intended outcome. So there's intent. Now, while we can create our own words, obviously we can create our own symbols. Think about how this language is being used in certain context. Think about what you say to other people, how you talk to yourself, whether it's out loud, which is okay. <laughs> whether it's internally, you know, mentally trying to motivate yourself. And then also how you receive and then perceive and process information is very important, right? So think about negative and positive aspects of that. Think about what outcome you want, what the effect is going to be from the cause of your statement or your question. And also think about how persuasive or manipulative language can be. And we'll start with the self. If we're telling ourselves that we are sick, let's say, oh, I don't feel well. I feel sick. Just It's, it's, it's not getting better. Just feel horrible. What are you doing? You're casting a spell on yourself. You're you're taking that energy, and you are internalizing that, and your cells, your body, yourself, is going to conspire, because you're saying you are sick. You do feel horrible, and past, present, and future tense all matters when you're using language, right? I am going to. I have, I am. So if you're saying you are sick, that's a negative thing to say to yourself. I'm getting better. I feel great. That while that might not be a factual statement, if you are physically sick, that will help your body, your spirit, soul, whatever you want to call it, conspire to make you well. And think about how you talk to other people. If you are in a position of power, if you are a parent, if you are a friend, business partner, whatever, think about how you talk to people. What you may think is constructive criticism might be destructive criticism. If you're always finding something wrong and bringing that up and emphasizing the negative, that person is going to 
have that energy, absorb that energy, and is going to have a difficult time getting rid of that negative experience. Hey, you're not doing this. You're not doing that. Uh, I expected more. Horrible thing to say to somebody. Now, it's motivating, and it can be. You can use a negative experience, a negative phrase, sentence, statement to persuade, to manipulate, right? But think about how you're talking to yourself, how you're perceiving that information, how you're talking to others. You are casting spells. You are changing the energy while it's being transferred, while it's being processed. And that will get driven into the subconscious. <laughs> and then, you know, think about symbols. Think about how symbols are created. And let's, let's get back to written word just for a second. So cursive, they're not teaching cursive anymore. Why do you think that is? If we're talking about spelling and we're talking about movements, we're talking about sacred geometry and how much weight that carries. That has more power in that word, in that sentence, in that paragraph. Because you have movements in there that are calculated. Now, you know, I, I talked about sigils and making symbols and activating them, right? And this can be used as a form of motivation is a form of I am, I will, you know. But think about how the, our language was constructed and all these words. And think about codes. Think about the 26 letters in the English alphabet. And every single one of those letters has a number. Think about ac acronyms. You know, when you hear NASA, and, and I laugh at it, but every time I think about NASA, I actually think about never a straight answer. What if that was... Someone meditated on that acronym, gave it that power, and we accept that. Eh, no, there's no aliens, or, you know, it takes this long to get there, and these are real images of planets, and I don't know. Think about LOL. Laugh out loud. What if that means loss of love? What if that means you never have the ability, there, there's some kind of spell on that, and you say that, and you write that, and you text that, and that energy... Because somebody created that. You have that experience. I don't know. But there is definite, definite power in language. And it is definitely being used against you in all forms. You need to know this. You need to think about everything. You need to think about what you say, what tones, what cadence, what rhythm. What emphasis you're placing on certain aspects of your conversations with yourself and with other people and also be able to perceive what someone is actually saying to you. Are they suggesting you do things? Are they persuading you? Are they manipulating you? This holds weight. Language, words, sounds, tones, emphasis, all of it holds weight and it's being used in different ways. And it's not all bad. There's definitely information, knowledge we all seek, we all share with each other. But don't create situations where you are stuck, where you can't get out of. Don't tell yourself you're not good enough, you're not smart enough. Have positive affirmations. I am good enough. I am smart enough. I will. I will beat this. I will do this. I am strong. I am smart. I am amazing. I am magical. And you can also incorporate those into symbols and sigils and actually have a portion of language that will work for you along with your thoughts and your emotions. All right. Just want to talk about that a little bit. It's been running through my mind. I appreciate you joining me for this ride. Thanks as always for uh, checking out Raven's Arcana. If you dig the video, give us a like. If you want future updates, or you like the channel, you want some notifications, want to show your support, give us a subscribe. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Take care.